Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. It's Dr. Ashley, Pediatric Emergency Mom, and today I'm talking to you about um, viral myositis, which is virus-induced muscle inflammation. Um, yes, I'm sitting in my house. Yes, I'm still wearing my sweater, my scarf, and my hat because it is freezing here. Um, South Louisiana, y'all, like we don't do 30 degrees. I, I just, I can't do it. Um, and we live in an old house, so it's really hard to heat um, and keep it warm. Um, so yeah, this is how I'm coming to you live. Anyway, um, I hope y'all are having a great day. Uh, in recent discussions about the flu um, and the surging flu cases, I wanted to just talk about uh, viral myositis as well. So this is something that we see not too uncommonly associated with the flu. Um, and it really depends on the active strain each year um, when we see these surges in myositis. So last year, for example, um, I think it was like after Christmas, we started seeing a ton of kids with viral myositis. Um, this year, uh, same. I think I saw my first one um, yesterday and my partners said they said the same thing. Like since the new year, they've started to see them trickle in. So this is a year where it looks like we're gonna be probably seeing more of these cases. Where other years, you know, we, we really can't tell why uh, one year and not another year. Um, other years, we, we may not see it at all. So what is this? This is when um, a child has the flu and they're kind of on the recovery phase of the flu. So they're on their like last day of fever or maybe the fever's already resolved. Um, still probably have some runny nose, cough congestion, some muscle aches. Um, but then kind of a classic presentation is you wake up, um, go to get your little one up, and they won't walk. And they'll refuse to stand up, and they'll say that their legs hurt. And typically, if you have them just sitting, their feet are pointed down, so their toes are more pointed to the ground. And if you try to flex their foot up, um, so flex their ankle up, they will complain of calf pain. They do not want you touching their legs. They do not want you squeezing their calves. Um, and, and they just won't walk. And so <clears throat> some parents will think, well, it's probably muscle aches um, from the flu, just myalgias and muscle aches from the flu. Um, but then when they won't walk is when parents get worried and bring them in. Um, and these kids, you know, having done this for so long, we see these kids come in and I can sp spot these kids. Like my nurses know, oh, this, this kid's probably got myositis. Um, and so what do we do for these kids? We um, typically put an IV and give IV fluids and then we're checking a level called CPK, um, which is a measure of kind of muscle breakdown products. So in this, so this is very generalized explanation of myositis. So in these um, cases, what happens is the muscle gets really inflamed and can have some breakdown, um, and that's measured by the CPK. And so the average range, based on some old studies, the average range of CPK in these cases is like 900 to, I wrote it down in case I forgot, 2,500, um, with the average or the median, I should say, the median, uh, being about 1,800. But we'll see kids with CPKs in you know, 5,000, 6,000, 10,000, um, these levels getting to be pretty high. The worry, and, and it's rare for viral myositis to progress to include um, kidney involvement, but that is the worry, is that the way I explain it to parents is that these muscle breakdown products can kind of clog up the kidney um, and cause a little bit of a kidney injury that is um, transient, like doesn't last long um, and typically resolves with fluids, but definitely needs to be treated. So we're checking the CPK, we're checking kidney function. We can test the urine for something called urine myoglobin, but that's often, that's another um, muscle breakdown product that gets spilled out in the urine. But that's often negative because that peaks before the CPK rises. Um, so we, we're not leaning heavily on that. I typically admit these patients um, for IV fluids overnight. We need to make sure they're really well hydrated and their kidneys are flushing well. I mean, if they have the flu, they're probably not eating and drinking great to begin with. 
Um, and then I also think like, okay, well, I'm seeing them on this day and their CPK right now is 2000. But what's their CPK going to be um, and their renal function? What's that going to be uh, tonight or the next day? And so admission for IV fluids and trending those levels and making sure they don't progress to rhabdomyolysis where they have um, the same, the muscle weakness, not wanting to walk, calf pain, but now dark urine and affected kidney function. And rhabdomyolysis is, um, is definitely a concerning thing and something I could cover at a, a later live. But um, this is just to educate you guys, you know, this is also called um, benign acute childhood myositis. Um, I have to, like, I wrote my notes because my brain, the cold weather is like, my brain is having a hard time this morning. Um, but just so you guys know, so hopefully, you know, you're, you don't get the flu, but if the flu happens to hit your household, um, and you wake up and your little one isn't wanting to walk, then you know to seek medical care. Um, the, in like past data, the average age is about six and it does happen, um, slightly more in boys than in girls, like 60, 65% boys versus girls. Um, but, uh, very easily treatable. Um, and yeah, that's it. Viromyositis. Y'all have a great day.